How do we all know if we are saving enough to provide an adequate pension in the years or decades to come? With inequalities in abilities to save, combined with a cost of living crisis, are we looking at a pension time bomb? The PLSA's recent parliamentary event looked at what changes are needed to create future financial security for all. The Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association celebrating all they've achieved at a parliamentary event to mark their 100th anniversary. But this organisation, along with all their members, are acutely aware that there's a lot more work to be done to avert a pensions crisis. We would like to set the pension system some objectives so it should be adequate, affordable and fair. We want to see the state pension keeping people out of poverty. We want to see reforms to auto-enrolment to make it broader and more inclusive. And we want to address specifically some of the inequalities in the current system. And then finally, we really want to support key industry initiatives to make sure people get the most out of their pension. Despite the success of auto-enrolment, which has brought millions more into pension schemes, the current contribution levels may simply not be enough, with many still missing out. There are two groups of people who are currently missing out on pension contributions and will probably fall short in retirement. Um, the first of those are people on lower incomes, either because they're not in automatic enrolment because they don't earn £10,000 a year, or they're on earnings, say, between ten and 20000 who are only getting pension saving on some of their salary. And these people are very often women because they're working part-time, often looking after kids, uh, looking after old people. Now there's a second group, um, and these are the self-employed. They're not included in automatic enrolment pension saving at all. And all the evidence is that they're not saving enough. I think there's a very strong case, which my select committee has supported, for increasing the statutory minimum contributions through auto enrolment so that people do start to save more. Of course, it's very difficult to increase pension contributions in a cost of living crisis, and I'm not suggesting that we ought to be doing that today, but what should be done today is setting out a plan for how over time those contributions will be increased so that we all know where we're heading. We've got a confident basis on which to plan. To help you picture what retirement lifestyle you could have, we've developed the Retirement Living Standards. Based on independent research with people just like you, the Retirement Living Standards will help you understand the real cost of the lifestyle you could have when you retire. Through adequacy awareness, policy and campaign work such as their independent retirement living standards, the PLSA have now provided a clear illustration for savers about what they need to accumulate to fund the lifestyle they want. But with pension freedoms now in place, those looking after our financial futures consider the investment advice pensioners receive upon retirement as equally crucial. When you reach the point of retirement, as an industry and as policymakers, we suddenly assume you're going to be super engaged and you're going to make some really complex decisions. That's not the reality of how people behave. We've got research that demonstrates people don't want that kind of experience. So what it's about is actually giving people the right product at the right time that does the right thing for them. I think pensions is a sort of unsung hero of social policy, really. You know, it's so critical to people's overall uh, financial well-being across their working life and beyond. And I think, you know, the PLSA have such a, a, a critical role in, in making sure that everyone gets a better income in retirement. And with only 50% of savers currently on track to meet the retirement income targets set by the 2005 Pensions Commission, it's now more important than ever that policymakers, government and the pensions industry as a whole continue to collaborate on initiatives to ensure better financial outcomes for all.